Hello friends and welcome back to House of Props. Today I will be adding to the Viking collection by building this Viking inspired Dragon Slayer helmet completely out of EVA foam. So let's get started. I cut the helmet pieces out of 6mm foam and began by attaching the darts on the dome piece with contact cement. These darts will create a seam, and this seam will be used as the center point for the rest of the helmet construction. Now would be a great time to click the subscribe and notification buttons if you have not yet done so, that way you won't miss out on future projects. Or if you're able to, scan this code so you can have this channel on your phone for when you're on the go. To finish the dome, I will fill in the sides with two of these pieces. I take extra care when I attach the dart. I want to make sure that the outer edge is aligned first before I really press it together because I want this to be as smooth as possible because it's the outer edge. Then these pieces can be added to the top part of the dome. I begin by attaching this side up to the point of the dart. Then I switch to the front and align these bottom edges. And then I work my way along the rest of the seam, slightly stretching the top piece. This stretching will help give the dome the curve shape that is needed. Next, the face guard is centered on the center seam and then attached on the bottom edge of the dome. And the same process is repeated with the neck guard as well. The only thing with this piece is you want to make sure to stretch the neck guard so that the curve in the corners aligns with the semicircle on the face guard. I wanted some dragon detail on the front, so I used some foam clay in this amazing mold from Evil Ted. Once the mold is full, I place it in the freezer for two hours and then remove the foam and let it dry out overnight. The next day, I attach the dragon to a strip of 6mm foam which has been trimmed to fit the dragon's head. This was then glued so the dragon is positioned between the eyes and the strip covers the center seam on the dome. Next, I attach some triangular EVA foam dowel pieces around the outer edge of the neck guard facing. Check out my video where I show you how you can make these dowels yourself for cheap without spending a ton of money. And then I cover this seam with a 1 inch wide strip of 6mm foam. Now it was time to assemble the horns, which I cut out of 4mm foam. I began by aligning two of the registration marks and then sealing the gap in between, but I found that doing it this way, it helps really give the horn its curved shape. When it's time to close, I begin at the tip of the horn and work my way down to the base. This last step can be a little tricky, but take your time and you will see the horn's shape emerge. I then attach the horns like this, where the seam on the horn aligns with the seam created by the dome and face guard. You want to get these as secured as possible before proceeding, otherwise they could get knocked off at an event or when you're on a campaign. Around the base of each horn, I glue a half inch wide strip of 4mm foam. This helps hide the edge where the horn sits on the helmet. To give the horn some dimensionality, I take a rolled piece of foam clay and wrap this around the horn. 
Then using some water and my finger, I press and smooth one side of the clay onto the horn base. This technique will give you horns that look segmented, like pieces growing out of each other. I use four rolls of clay per horn, that way I end up with horns that have five segments each. Next, I start attaching the scales along the top of the 6mm foam strip. I start at the base of the helmet and work my way to the front. This way I can have the scales overlap. These scales are cut from 2mm foam and have been pressed so that they have a crease along their middle and are glued into place with contact cement. The two scales that fit between the dragon horns are slightly smaller than the rest, but they are included in the template. <laughs> I had to laugh at my build at this point because with the orange and the green it looked hilarious. Luckily that will change. Next I fitted a piece of 6mm foam between the dragon head and the helmet horns. Then using CA glue I attached strips of 2mm foam around each of the eye openings. These will help give the helmet's face a little more definition. I use the CA glue again to attach two small Celtic Dragon details to the cheek guards. I would attach about an inch at a time because this way it allowed me to get the positioning and the curve just right. Once this side was done, I mirrored the process on the other cheek. On the neck guard, I began by attaching the center of this dragon detail to the center line and worked my way out from the middle. Then, on the dome, I covered the two longer seams with 2mm foam strips, and then attached three scales that would accentuate the nose guard. I started with the one at the bottom and worked my way up to the dragon head. Along the bottom edge of the face guard, I attach a strip of 2mm foam. The strip is positioned so there is a slight edge that sticks off of the front of the helmet but is flush with the inside edge. The final assembly pieces that needed added were all the rivets. I began by gluing four onto each strip around the horns. Then glue two onto each scale along the helmet's mohawk. And finally added five to each two millimeter strip along the top of the helmet. Now it was time for texturing. I began by taking my rotary tool with a sanding drum and carved texture onto the horns. Then I added battle damage across the surface of the helmet. Next, I took this carving tip and carved a slight channel around each horn segment. This will help add to the illusion that these are segments that grew out of each other. Then I heat sealed the entire helmet while being careful not to hold the heat gun in one spot for too long or the thin pieces would start to curl and warp. Using quick seal and a palette knife I fill any gaps and seams where pieces didn't quite align correctly.
By using a little bit of water, you can smooth the edges of the quick seal, and this way you won't end up with any bumps or lumps all over the place. Once the quick seal was dry, it was time to spray the helmet with Plasti Dip. I typically spray three coats to get a smooth, even coverage across the entire piece. I let the Plasti Dip cure overnight, and then I airbrush the helmet, except the horns, with a metallic silver acrylic. Once the silver was dry, I pounced black acrylic into the grooves and crevices and then dabbed these areas with a paper towel. This adds aging to the silver and makes it look more like an authentic metal. I found I needed to repeat the process two more times to get the exact texture I desired. Next, I based the horns with a tan acrylic I mixed from white and raw umber. While the horn base dried, I took some thinned burnt umber and added this to spots across the metal surface and then dabbed these areas with a paper towel to blend. This just adds some more aging and weathering to the helmet. I brushed some thinned white onto the horn segments, making sure not to cover them entirely and then blended by dabbing with a paper towel. Once that had dried, I reapplied some of the whitewash to the top of each segment and blended this into the previous layer. When the white was thoroughly dry, I took a raw umber wash and brushed this across the base of each segment and again blended the edge with a paper towel. Once that was dry, I repeated the same process with a burnt umber wash, except this time I let some of the raw umber show. The final step was to take a black wash and apply a thin strip of this along the base of each segment and blend with a little bit of water. And there you have it, a Viking inspired Dragon Slayer helmet made completely out of EVA foam. Every element about this helmet screams dragon and gives a glimpse into the character's history. Maybe he's collected trophies from each of his kills and included them in his armor. I hope you enjoyed this build as much as I did. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and family, and subscribe to House of Props. And if you want to build one of these for yourself, you can find a link to the template in the below description. And remember, if you are building any of my builds or using any of my templates, feel free and tag me at House of Props on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok because I would really like to see your fantastic work. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.